What if I said that everything that happens in The Last of Us Part 2 is meaningless? What if I said that the platinum trophy for this game isn't worth it? What if what I said turned out to be true, yet still contained a beautiful journey that made you question where you stand and how to move forward? That, folks, is what today's journey is all about. Originally released in 2020, The Last of Us Part 2 garnered major critical praise for its story, sound design, cast, accessibility, and user experience, while also raising controversy for a few of the same things. More on that later. Now, I actually did not play the game back in 2020. As much as I loved the first game and every game made by Naughty Dog, seriously, they do not miss. The thought of playing a nearly 40 hour long, unsettling campaign just wasn't at the top of my lockdown to-do list. Fast forward to 2024, the PS5 now being pretty readily available, Sony decided that it's time to milk the studio's most recent game of the year and release a remastered edition of it. And you know what? I ate that ish up. I'm sorry, the upgrade was only $10 for me, man. The main game features 26 trophies, and the DLC included with the remaster boasts an additional 15 trophies. I'll start with the trophies for the base game, since they're the ones that are actually tied to the Platinum Trophy. We can talk about the DLC later. The story begins by introducing us to the main protagonist, Ellie, who you may know and love from the first game. Essentially, she's just a normal girly living in a post-apocalyptic mushroom zombie world. Oh yeah, and she's immune to the fungal disease that creates the infected. She gets called to go on patrol nearby her current home city of Jackson. Thank the lord it's not anything more difficult to pronounce. Mobile. Mobile? 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 How many ways can you say it? How many ways do people actually say it? Yeah, I like the first one. Beal. Oh. Beal. Mobile. Oh. Okay, I hear it now. Weedowee? <laughs> Weedowee? Cairo and Lafayette? Those are my guesses. <laughs> Wait, I got those all wrong. There's no way. Wad. Wadowee? 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 Cairo and Lafayette. Oh. What the? <laughs> Those are all wrong. <laughs> Wadawi. Hey, bro. Lafayette. Dow like the stock. Wadawi. What? Wadawi. Okay, okay. I'm seeing how this is working out. <laughs> and it's on that patrol that I learn all about player upgrades. Ooh, a trophy apprentice. Learn a player upgrade. W. All right. I was not expecting to get one on the first night, but sure. First upgrade down. And weapon upgrades. All my years of playing Uncharted have prepared me for the amount of resources and collectibles that I will need to find throughout this game. Throughout this playthrough, I have to keep my eyes out for Flintstones multivitamins, player upgrades, parts for weapon upgrades, workbenches to use the parts at, training manuals to unlock further player upgrade branches, my dad's and Ellie's favorite collectibles, trading cards, journal entries, artifacts, safes that contain all the above, and weapons that I will use over the course of the story. Now you may be thinking, wow, that's a lot of stuff to find. And well, yeah. It is. There's literally 286 various collectibles scattered throughout The Last of Us Part 2. They literally have a 1 to 1 ratio of collectibles, the Game of the Year awards at this point. Definitely going to need a guide for the second playthrough because, spoiler alert, I'm not finding everything first try. I'm also totally not dying in the first few hours of the game. Come here. What? No! Oh my goodness! What? Dude, there's no way. What? I literally did not move. It's like a T-Rex, right? They can't they can't see in front of them. <laughs> oh, if you stand in front of their bark, they will see you. Oh. Oh my gosh. <gasps> ah! Oh no, this is not good. This is not good. This is not good. This is not good. Oh, I'm dead. Oh my god. Oh my <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> no, dude. But you know who did have their game ended early? The man, the Chad. The star of the first game, so he's a sequel, you know, Joel. Oh, whoops, spoiler alert, I guess. His brother Tommy also gets clapped. Two of them were on patrol together, and they rescued a girl named Abby, who leads them back to her squad, who absolutely murked the two. Oh, jeez. Bro, you're kidding me. Oh, brother, dude. And I understand why people hate this game. <laughs> That's crazy. No, I actually hate everything about this. That's wild. Oh, jeez, dude, I feel mad uncomfy. That's... <laughs> Ay, 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 dude. What? Ellie hears about and rushes over to the scene, only to witness a canon event. It's also at this point that the childlike wonder leaves my eyes. You're kidding me. What? And guess what? He survived? Look how cold. So Tommy just survives? Tommy actually evades death and heads out to Abby's home city of Seattle. Once Ellie and her girlfriend slash patrol partner Dina hear about this, they also move out to the Pacific Northwest in a quest for revenge. I piddle around downtown Seattle looking for clues on Abby's whereabouts. I find a ton of collectibles, including enough trading cards to pop a trophy. Beautiful. Hey, starter set. What's that for? Find five trading cards. Dang, I got five already? And a certain engraved ring in the back of a lockbox. Oh, a ring. <gasps> no way, dude. Alright, let's get sick. Right, I know it's a sick Parvis Magna. That I know. Say what? 
that? What is that doing in here? A ring. That belongs to Nathan Drake. So great and small. Find the engraved ring. Oh my goodness. Unfortunately, I did miss a trophy in this section that is unlocked by exploring every location in downtown. You'd think that me having a degree in geography would have helped me find more than eight locations here, so we'll come back to this on a second playthrough later. I begin to find evidence of someone probably named Tommy being around, which means that Abby's group, the WLF, is lurking. And by lurking, I mean that they literally blow up Ellie oh, and Dina's horsey. R.I.P. Shimmer. And capture the two of them. Of course they break out and I start to get my first human encounters of the game. Nothing too crazy and nothing I'm incapable of handling. Oh, I have the high ground. That is until I have Ow. to fight humans and infected at the same time. And not only are there the runners and the clickers that you and I are perhaps used to, but it's at this point that I'm introduced to the Shambler as a feature that catches me by surprise. The heck, butt cheeks out, double cheeked up on a Friday. What are we doing? Why was there two of them here? Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that. And speaking of being caught by surprise, Dina has one for Ellie. Upon learning that her girlfriend is now pregnant with someone else's baby, Ellie finds an old guitar, plays a song that Joel taught her, and gets some of that honk shoe action. And she actually has a dream of Joel when they hung out at every four-year-old's favorite place, the Science Museum, full of old hats, dinosaurs, old hats on dinosaurs. Incredible. Looks good on you. <laughs> Put a hat on your companion. That's awesome. <laughs> and spaceships. Ellie wakes up and comes up with some plans to explore one of the city's northern neighborhoods. After hearing some explosions and finessing some firefights, I find my main man, Jesse. Wait, that's oh, not Tommy. What? That's Dina's ex-boyfriend and baby daddy. But we don't need to tell him that yet. Now, it's time to knock out for the night. Ellie has another dream about Joel, this time involving my best FaZe Clan sniping montage. <laughs> loader tussle and Ellie confronting Joel about what actually happened at the hospital and Joel lies about how the first game ended. Ellie wakes up and decides to head to the hospital to intercept a WLF supply run. Along the way, I make sure to put those supplements to good use and fully upgrade one branch of the skill tree. As I progress, I learn all about stalkers. <gasps> oh my god. Oh hell no. Oh hell no. <laughs> Oh, dude, I'm like actually scared right now. That's crazy. Stalkers. The heck are those? Oh, these things are quick. What? Whoa! Oh, yeah. Just take me. Take me. Take me. Take me. Yep. <laughs> what are those? When did these people get introduced? Holy moly. I hate this. I hate this game. <laughs> Sewers. Seraphites slash scars. Oh, jeez. Oh my god! Where? And why you shouldn't be playing your PS Vita when you're on guard duty. I very sneakily, and by sneakily I mean absolutely obliterating every opponent in my way, make my way into the hospital and find Abby's good friend Nora, who does cough up some information, but at the expense of a metal pipe's physical health and Ellie's mental health. Ellie returns to her friends, passes out, has another dream about Joel, this time about when they went back to the hospital and she learned the truth. Look, I get that if you played the first game, you'd agree with me, but even though Joel made the decision that we all would have made, it led to a lot of spilled blood and angry parties, including Ellie herself. Herself. She wakes up, tells Jesse that he is the father, and the two head towards the local aquarium, where they hope to find Tommy and slash or Abby. I find quite a few workbenches on the way, allowing me to fully upgrade one of my weapons. The two eventually split off over a difference of route opinions, and I slice my way through quite a few enemies. I also learn how to shoulder swap. Oh. What? Why would you aim over that shoulder, bro? You never aim lefty. You know what? I'm just running at this girl. Oh, brother. The combat in this game freaking sucks. Why would you? You're literally aiming right. Why would you aim lefty? What are you? Oh my god. I'm going to lose it. No, how do you not aim at lefty? Remember shoulder swap? No, default right. Well, how do you switch shoulders? This was, this is a new mechanic. <laughs> okay. Square while you're aiming. Dude, I didn't even know that was a control, brother. If, 
If I knew that earlier, that'd be cool, but I didn't, and now I almost died multiple times. There we go. Now that we're back to riding, we can actually hit shots and drive a boat. I sent my boat down the flooded streets of Seattle, which is becoming increasingly dark and stormy and foreboding. I take a break at an arcade to discover my 12th workbench and take down a random bloater. I dip from the arcade and eventually make it to the aquarium, where I leave a nasty Yelp review due to the garbage rides. I ride this. I ride this. I really thought it would have been a good game if they just would have let me ride the seesaw. Other than that, it seems like a pretty cool place. Rather empty though, until I find two of Abby's closest confidants, Owen and Mel, who I dispose of rather quickly and realize that I may have made a horrible mistake. Oh, I know they're the bad guys, but it's still upsetting. And that horrible mistake leads to Abby tracking down Ellie's squad, putting a bullet through Jesse's cheek, sending Tommy to the gulag again, and bringing Abby face to face with Ellie for the first time since Joel's passing. And then enter a flashback scene. We are whisked away to a few years prior, where a young Abby finds my home state quarter. Oh, hey, Virginia. The first of many Abby unique collectibles. And her dad, who is tending to a frightened zebra, until he receives word to suit up for her surgery as a girl that contains the key to a vaccine just arrived. That's right, Abby's dad was the head surgeon at the hospital that Joel went full Rambo on. And once Abby saw that her father made his way to the afterlife, she vowed to get revenge on the man who did this, which is exactly what she did at the start of this story. Holy schmoly. The perspective shift. Look, I don't like Abby at all at this point either, but she had her reasons. Kind of hard to argue with that. We pick back up with Abby during the present day in Seattle at the same time that Ellie arrives. It is here that we learn that Abby is living out every angsty middle school jock's fantasy of living in a soccer stadium. Abby gets a friendly wake-up call from her friend Manny, and we make our way out the stadium, making sure to door dash some burritos, pet the goodest girl and boy. Oh my goodness. A fully functioning fetch mechanic. And win a friendly little shooting competition against Manny. Dude, I'm a natural. With our good girl Alice and our homegirl Mel now by our side, we hit the road, only to be ambushed and forced to head across town on foot. I find my fifth state quarter and arrive at the forward operating base, linking up with Nora, who you know from earlier, and chatting with the leader of the WLF, Isaac. Turns out that one of his best soldiers and Abby's ex has gone slightly AWOL, inducing a flashback to the time that Abby and this guy, Owen, were together and broke into an aquarium together leading present-day Abby to sneak over to said aquarium in hopes of finding Owen there. During my journey, I take out some infected, find a certain artifact that I'm sure all four of you Jack and Daxter fans can appreciate. Hey, wait a minute. Relic of the Sages. Find the strange artifact. You're kidding. Ain't no way they put a precursor ore from Jack and Daxter in this very optional building on the side of Seattle while you're playing as Abby. Oh, man. Ay, ay, ay. That's about the best part of this story so far. <laughs> get jumped by another infected oh oh my god scare me dude can't do that brother i have the heart of a 40 year old i can't take that <laughs> learn my 25th player upgrade take out some seraphites slash scars and then get put to sleep this leads abby to have another dream about owen and her at the aquarium except this time owen is not with mel she isn't there so i pick up a nerf bow and put my elite gamer skills to the test Put my name up. Best archer on this side of the Mississippi. This is also when Abby gets her first good bit of intel on Joel's location. Suddenly, Abby wakes up to being gifted a free rope to go around her neck. How thoughtful. While she's being assisted by the Seraphites, a trader is brought forward. The team lead goes all Bob the Builder on her arm until another trader arrives and takes out the other Seraphites. The two free Abby, and a new alliance is formed. I assist the young defectors, navigate my way to the final training manual. Journeyman find all training manuals. What? That's all of them? Make it to the aquarium. And you know who's actually there? It's Owen. The two patch things up pretty quickly to my confusion, as Owen proves he's actually a very naughty boy who's incapable of thinking about his girlfriend. I have many thoughts, but I'll stop myself here. After realizing what had just happened, Abby decides to dip, and it's not due to shame. No sir, no time for that here. It's because she feels bad for the kids that she helped escape earlier. The one with the broken arm, Yara, didn't seem to be doing too hot, and her brother Lev was only a boy. So I make my way over to where I dropped him off, Take them back to Owen and Mel at the aquarium, just to learn that Yara needs an amputation and Mel needs some supplies to make it happen. So Abby and Lev head towards the hospital. Luckily, Lev knows a shortcut. I finish crafting at least one of every item. Ooh, tools of the trade. Craft every item. Wow, I didn't realize it was the hunting pistol ammo. Take a tumble into a conveniently placed Olympic-sized swimming pool. Clear out an infected, infested hotel. Oh my gosh! I forgot that thing can charge. The dead? Holy crap. Oh, that was easy. Hey, yay, yay. Why? Why? Why do these things come out of the walls now? 
I thought we were done. Link up with Nora at the hospital and learn that the WLF has basically picked the hospital clean of all the medical supplies. Except for some on the lower levels where the fungal outbreak started in the city of Seattle. I think it's safe to say that there's some creepy things down here and I never want to go back here ever again. Oh, we're fighting it. I didn't mean to use the bottle. Oh, did I, did I kill it? Oh gosh. Now. Oh no! Well, that's great. Okay. Yep, cool. <laughs> Ow. No, please, 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 please. I'm dead. Yep, that's cool. Jeez. Okay. Okay, it's gonna multiply again. Oh no, it's dead? Oh. That's it? That's all you got? Oh, <laughs> this thing out of here. I really thought he was gonna be at the end of the tunnel, not in the tunnel. Yeah, I'm over this place. <laughs> Get me out. I somehow make it out alive and take a boat with Lev back to the aquarium where the surgery is a success. Mel lets Abby know that her and Owen are taking Yara and Lev to one of my favorite beach cities, Santa Barbara. Lev isn't happy about the family road trip though and Mel refuses to offer a spot to Abby as she is sus of the way Abby's been acting recently. Drama. Anyways, Lev runs away to find his mom, so it's my job to chase after him, until I get caught by some sniper fire with Manny. I don't know how he got here, but I ain't mad about it. We push towards the sniper, and as soon as I think we have him cornered, he rings Manny's bell. Oh my god. I find out that it's actually Tommy, and send him overboard into the bay. Now that I can safely secure a boat with Yara, she guides us to her and Lev's mother's house on a Seraphite island, where we find Lev absolutely shook after their mother took a stumble. On the way out, Yara gets jumped, Isaac makes an appearance and forces Abby to explain herself, but she doesn't have to as Yara uses her last breath to hit Isaac in the back, distracting the WLF forces long enough for Abby and Lev to run. At this point, there is now a full-on war on the island, and I need to fight my way off of it. I even gotta take out a tank of a clown before finding the last boat off the island. Oh my gosh. Jeez. How does he survive that? Dude, how's this guy still alive? This guy's a madman. The heck out of here, please. I'm not having fun anymore. Abby and Lev return to the aquarium only to see what Ellie has done. Hey Siri, play XO2 or Left by a little Uzi Bird. No, Siri, Siri, no. Siri, not actually. I'm not. I'm not actually talking to you. It's for the script. I promise. No, stop. This game is a double revenge story now. As Abby checks down Ellie, puts a bullet through Jesse's cheek, sends Tommy to the gulag, and puts us right back to where we were before we saw things through Ellie's POV. And guess what? And I'm just supposed to play as Abby through this? There's no way. Abby is not the hero here. You're kidding me. This is now a boss fight, except Ellie is the boss. We're still in Abby's POV, and I gotta say, this might be one of the worst boss fights I've ever had the displeasure of experiencing. Even on a normal difficulty, I just could not figure out what was going on. Oh my god. Oh. I didn't realize I was supposed to dodge that. <laughs> um, take two. Oh my god, how? No, you're kidding me. What the? What? Oh my god, what am I supposed to do here? Of course. Oh my god, where did she get a shotgun from? No, go up! You dingus! Hold! Oh my goodness, you're kidding me. Oh, damn. She just got shot in the face, dude. Oh, don't attack Heli head off. What the, what are you supposed to do? I literally have nowhere to go. Oh my God, what? I hate everything about this. What? Dude, ain't no way she heard me. Mm, this is not a fun boss fight, dude. What am I supposed to do? I literally can't get behind her. Dude, like, and if you move at all, she like hears you perfectly. Dude, this is such dog water. Like she literally pulls a shotgun out from in between her booty cheeks. I have to get behind her and she hears every little thing I do. What? Like, what did I do? 
What did I do to give myself away there? Nothing moved. I literally took a step and she heard me. And I'm supposed to get behind her somehow? No way, dude. What? I literally just twiddled my thumbs for 20 minutes. Oh my god, you're kidding me! Like, she just dodges it? Since when? I literally just hit her with it. Like, where do I need to throw this to, like, actually get behind her? There we go. Dude, that's so stupid. Is he gonna choke her out right now? Is Abby gonna choke Ellie out right now? That's crazy. Oh, jeez. Oh my goodness. Did you still have a shotgun? Where did she get a bow? Oh, brother. Where did she get a bow and arrow from? Oh my gosh, she's got Molotovs now? Of course. Bro, what? What did she just stab me with? Dude, everything about this fight makes no sense at all. I truly hate the way this game is played out. What? I literally got behind her and hit her. How did I just die? Ain't no way, bro. Dude, she moves so fast. What the? She's like running while crouching. That's actually insane. And she's like crafting Molotovs and crap. Dude, I'm pretty dead here, aren't I? What? Like, I didn't even move and she heard me? Oh my gosh. What? Where was that? Dude, this fight is not, it's not even a fight, it's just jank. Until I did figure it out. Oh, jeez. Eventually, Dina rushes in. Gets torched by Lev and Abby. And Ellie makes a final plea. Abby wants to end things, but Lev encourages her not to. So they leave Ellie and Dina alive. Roll cred. Just kidding. Brother. Fast forward a few months, and Ellie and Dina are living happily ever after on a remote farm in the mountains with their cute baby boy. I am presented with genuinely one of the most beautiful scenes in the game. So pure. It's so wholesome. This is what I need after this game, dude. Holy. Oh, dude, my back hurts. My brain is mad. <laughs> need to go to bed. Oh, dude. I know this isn't even technically the end of the game, but I'd say I beat the game, got the platinum, right? And also one of the scariest, as Ellie is now living with some form of PTSD. Even with all this peace and happiness, some things are still unresolved, I suppose. That is, until freaking Tommy shows up on the porch saying he knows where Abby is hiding now. He is promptly escorted out, as Dean and Ellie have sworn that life off and moved on. Or have they? Sensing Tommy's immense disappointment in day being ruined, Ellie has kept up at night knowing that she is the only one who can carry out Tommy's bloodlust over his brother. Ellie plays a song, remembers the time that Dina first kissed her, and then packs her bag. And when Dina tries to stop her, telling her that if she goes through with this, that she'll leave her, Ellie accepts the terms. We flip over to the final Abby POV cam in Santa Barbara, as Abby and Lev are looking for what's left of the Fireflies, Abby's original group. They make contact, and then get jumped and tied up. Like, that's literally it. Back to Ellie's POV, I guess. I make my way through SB, looking for clues on Abby's whereabouts, until now Ellie gets tied up in a trap. And guess who said it? The same guys that captured Abby. Except Ellie is a little more cunning in using the trap to her advantage. Dang. Oh, jeez. Dang, that's gonna be A. Once she's freed herself, I grab a silenced MP5, the last weapon that I need to add to my collection. Good maneuver by Ellie, but jeez. Oh, high caliber. And start to take out the Rattlers, as they call themselves. But I missed. But I infiltrate their home base, start a prison riot, and I'm told that Abby is currently hanging out at the pillars. I eventually locate her amongst the bodies and free her and Lev. And would you look at that? Two boats placed perfectly for the two parties to leave Santa Barbara. Except there's one problem. Ellie didn't come all this way just to let Abby sail off into the stormy sunset. She came here for revenge. It doesn't matter how many hundreds of bodies she's dropped because Joel's killer is still alive. The two duel in what may be one of the toughest scenes I've ever seen in all of gaming. Dude, I can't believe this is the way this game is ending. This is crazy. 
I don't like Abby, but I hate this. Abby has literally been starving in prison for the past few months, and Ellie brought a knife to the fist fight. Talk about unfair. And as much as I thought I didn't like Abby for what she did to Joel, seeing Ellie clap her just doesn't feel right. Am I? Feeling sad? For Abby? As Ellie puts her into a chokehold underwater, she has a flashback of Joel and just completely wusses out, letting Abby catch her breath and escape. Ellie came all this way, basically dismantled an entire military group, lost two of her fingers to Abby like they were some baby carrots, and for what? Ellie returns to the farm, only to see that Dina has completely packed the place up and left. It's honestly so cold and so sad to watch Ellie find all of her stuff boxed up in one room, to then pull out an old guitar, and not be able to play the song that Joel taught her because she is now missing two fingers on her chord playing hand. I then learned that the earlier flashback was to when Ellie learned to forgive Joel for what he did at the hospital. AKA, her forgiving Joel led to her forgiving Abby. Once she's done reminiscing on this fond memory, she gets up and leaves the farm behind. Oh man. Dude. What a game. And I mean that in the worst way possible. <laughs> uh, I put 30 hours into that and I feel like nothing happened. They killed Joel in the first hour and then nothing happened after that. Just every other character they introduced died. And that's all it was for 30 hours. And they tried to make the character who killed Joel the main character. She was supposed to get revenge on Ellie and Ellie was supposed to get revenge on her and neither of them did it. Neither of them finished the mission. Oh brother dude. I can't wait for the third one to come out but geez. I've never been so engrossed by a game yet so disgusted by it it's so crazy and like i really do like naughty dog as a studio and everything they've done but man this one this one makes me feel away and not a good way i'm gonna have to sit with these thoughts for a little bit and really collect myself here it also doesn't help that it's 1 a.m as of me recording this right now the feels are really hitting that's like a crazy game dude and i still gotta do the collectible cleanup dude uh you're not gonna work tomorrow <laughs> what i had to do Complete the story. That is the story of the last of us. I don't know why I paused in between it, but that's where my brain is at right now. That is the end of the story of The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered. Holy moly. And with the main story playthrough complete, it is time for every trophy hunter's favorite part, the cleanup. I start by going back to Santa Barbara and grabbing a collectible, and then I come up with my master plan. So of the 286 collectibles, and after getting that one in Santa Barbara on the chapter select, turns out there's only exactly 30 more collectibles for me to go. Which means if I can collect all of those, I'll have the platinum for this game. But I think to do that, I will need to start a new game plus. Because unfortunately, but also fortunately for me, most of my missed collectibles are in the first two areas of the game. The first two areas being Jackson and Seattle Day 1. I've got a few others also in Seattle Day 2, and then Seattle Day 1 is Abby. But I'm feeling good. So I'm just going to do new game plus. I'm going to try to skip as many cinematics as possible. I will be watching a video guide. <laughs> just trying to get this done. And we will clean this up and make the video. Let's get it. So I started zooming through Jackson looking for all the collectibles that I missed the first time I played it. The only safe remaining is one of the first things I cross off my list. Ooh, safe cracker. Wait, lock every safe. There's no way I didn't do that before. How did I not do that one before? Oh brother, how, I missed that the first time? That's the last safe I needed? Dang it, dude. <laughs> first safe you see in the game and I didn't even get it? How am I like this? <laughs> Once I make it to downtown Seattle, I locate the last workbench. It's the last workbench. Is this it? Oh, prepared for the worst. I know workbenches. That is the last workbench. I didn't even have to interact with it. <laughs> it just did it for me. Well, I may as well make an upgrade while I'm here, right? And a neat little record shop that I seem to have missed. Sightseer. Visit every location in downtown Seattle. Nice, dude. I can't believe this is it. Wow. Oh, this is kind of cute. Wait, Pearl Jam? <laughs> Remember, y'all. I work with maps for a living, and I still had trouble using this one. After getting a nice unplugged edition of Take On Me, I continue my search for artifacts, trading cards, parts, and supplements. Again, pro gamer, so I start to breeze through Seattle, finding the last Pokemon card, and managing to still get jump scared. Oh! Oh my god. <laughs> That's been my experience playing this game. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I just had to scare out of me. <laughs> oh! Oh, I'm dead. Just so I can wrap up Ellie's collectibles and upgrades. Just outside the stadium, I max out the crossbow, wrapping up the weapon attachment grind, 
There it is, Arms Master. I don't know what else to say, but W. <laughs> the attachment grind is complete. I thought I was only gonna have to do that in Call of Duty, but if I have to do that in The Last of Us, then so be it. Locate the final quarter. That's the last coin. Oh, look at that. There it is. Numismatist. Numismatist. Num Numismatist. Final coins. We found them all. That's all that matters. <laughs> That's all that matters there. You know how many jawbreakers I can buy with all these now? Find the last artifact that definitely wasn't hiding in plain sight. Oh, that's the one. Archivist. Wait, that's kind of crazy. Like, that's that's it. That's all the collectibles in the game. Two more upgrades for the Platinum Trophy. And pinpoint one final stash of stuff. Nearly 40 hours of agonizing gameplay, depressing storytelling, and shock value around every corner of coalesced into this moment. Let's take a live listen in. Y'all, I think this is it. I think this is the plan. This is the final upgrade. Dude, that's crazy. Like, I'm here. It's before my bedtime, actually, for one night. <laughs> oh, man. All right, here we go. The last player upgrade. Survival expert. Which means every last one of them. The platinum trophy for The Last of Us Part Two remastered. Oh, thank the lord, dude, that's a relief. Oh my gosh. Oh, I want to uninstall, but I can't because I haven't played Grounded or No Return yet. Oh, man. <laughs> and I might play it in the future, but I don't know. I don't want to. <laughs> oh no, what do I do, chat? What do I do? Do I play it on Grounded mode? Do I 100% the DLC trophies? Oh, I think that's gonna have to be a different video if I do it, but let me know down in the comments below if you want to see me do that. If you want to see me suffer for some trophies. <laughs> if y'all enjoyed today's content, make sure to drop a like. And if you don't want to see me continue to play this game, and continue to lose my mind playing this game, let me know down in the comments below what you want to see me play next. Of course, make sure to subscribe to actually see all that happen too. And if you enjoy watching me play action adventure third person shooters that may or may not involve taking down a cult in space, make sure to click on the video on screen. You are loved, I appreciate you, and I hope to see you on the next one. Peace.